This is where we get into the vortex. If you study whirlpools and you you actually do tests on them, what you'll find is that it create it has an incredible amount of energy, moving like billions of gallons of water if it's a really big one. Eventually it gets sucked down into this one nexus point or like origin point where the en- all of the energy is stored. Mm-hmm. Once you hit that point, things actually move up due to that energy. And I posted a video of this on my Instagram. I wish I had it, but it shows a stick going through a vortex, a little whirlpool. Oh, yeah. And it goes around, it goes around, it funnels its way down. And then all of a sudden it shoots off somewhere else. You can see the incredible amount of energy being forced into one direction. Like a UFO. just Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see what else. That looks so sick. Bro, it's a water tornado. It is one of the most, a vortex, a water vortex is one of the most beautiful things in nature. It's so shiny and everything. Dude, oh my God, look at that. So the vortex is partly responsible for structuring the water in such a way that makes it hydrating at the cellular level. And it creates electrical charge, Mm -hmm. which we'll get into later. Um, What I also want you to notice is what does this look like? Tornado. Exactly. Yeah. Same concept with a tornado. You have cool air mixed with hot air. It hits a certain point, creates a vortex. And, and just it's... think about the amount of power. Yeah, that there's a, a balance point has. where they both just charge. And yeah. Boom. Bro, I have goosebumps thinking about it. Like That's insane. Yeah. Dude, we got to watch Twister after this. <laughs> We're going to watch Twister <laughs> after this. So bear with me. This is a lot of information. Victor Schauberger's work was incredibly precise because he was the student in nature. Or he was the student and nature was the teacher. As I said, he lived by his motto, uh, comprehend and copy nature. Mm-hmm. So he, he essentially viewed water as a living being and looked up upon nature as a beautifully interconnected whole. And through his inventions and writings, he's become a conduit to a kind of spiritual sci- science of nature's subtle er- energies. I want to pause real quick. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to say? Because that was a lot of info. I mean, honestly, dude, it's just... It doesn't surprise me that something as slight as water carries all that weight, you know? Because just listening to Bruce Lee when I was younger, and even even today it's relevant. Let's just be water, you know? It's flexible. It, like can, water, it can produce massive amounts of energy. Mm-hmm. Undefeated. Right. Think of the ocean. It's a perfect Navy, example. Navy SEALs. Even a Navy SEAL can die. I was looking at through this on Reddit, and sometimes, dude, even a Navy SEAL, you're unmatched. For If the ocean is ready, done. <laughs> it's just water, right? Yeah. And I was watching a video yesterday, actually. <sighs> it's... I explained it, a little bit of it to you. But there are a few examples of really large whirlpools in the ocean. Mm-hmm like around Japan, around Norway, and the amount of energy these things produce, they can take down entire ships. Bro, oh my God. Remember what I was telling you the other day? Hmm. There was a whirlpool from a pipe from a man-made lake that killed a 10-year-old, and her younger brother was holding on to her because she was getting sucked in, and he was getting sucked in too. So he had to let her go, and her parents and everybody watched her die. They went looking in for her, but they couldn't. And it was this, this whirlpool. Started off like a little dot. And it sucked her all the way in, and they had to dig her out. They had to cut the pipe and yeah. drain it. It took like five days. That's insane, it's dude. It's terrible, but it's, it just goes to show the power. <sighs> yeah. And for any of you who are on, like, go to YouTube, search up um, natural whirlpools. You'll find that you'll find videos of them sucking in entire trees. Um, whatever you throw into it, it'll get rid of. Dude, like, unbelievable stuff. Cars. <laughs> <laughs> We need to do an experiment like that. No. Big ass world. Well, actually, car should we? Room. We turn into the slow mo guys. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right. So, so today we're going to be doing an episode for 500 miles per hour. <laughs> now, to build off of Victor Schauberger's work, we get into the work of Dr. Gerald Pollack. Okay. Who is one of the primary experts at studying water structuring so this is about how water how spring water is structured in a specific way that makes it superior are you talking about enzyme wise like elements it's or? it's way more than that okay so water can come in three different forms right you have solid liquid vapor 
But the work of Dr. Pollock revealed that there's actually a fourth phase of water, which is what he called easy water. Easy water. Yeah. So easy water is a special form of water that forms in your cells. It's like a charged battery. It can store energy and deliver it to cells that need it to function. It also makes your mitochondria stronger and acts as an antioxidant. Hmm. So the experiments that he ran here, and we have a, a little picture that we can put on the video for you. He, cre he put like this gel or any, any certain material in the experiment. Then he put bulk water. Um, and then he, what he found is that actually structured water, spring water, has this exclusion zone, hence easy water. And it, all, it, it basically buffers anything material-wise. This to me looks like the matrix codes with gaps in between. Yeah. Straight up. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the structure of spring water. Okay. And so. the interesting thing is that these easy layers are actually made up of H3O2. If you start, start counting the number of hydrogens and oxygens, not mm. water molecules, H2O. Okay. So spring water is not H2O. It's H3O2. H3O2. Um, I bet you a lot of people didn't know that. No. I'm learning that for the first time right now. Holy crap. Yeah. Okay. And what you can see are these layers in between where you find the exclusion zone. Uh, and you can see the different hydrogen uh, oxygen bonds. Furthermore, with his experimentation, sticking electrodes into the easy water shows a lot of negative charge in that zone. Um, and then let me go here. So basically around these two, what, cells you want to call them, there's a negative zone around each one. Sure. Um, and that creates a positive charge. Towards, yeah. In between. Sure. So the opposite charge is the reason why aerosol droplets come together. And it all makes sense from this perspective. This is why clouds are a thing. Mm -hmm. This is why, even though this, this goes against conventional science, like water droplets are not supposed to spend a little bit, you know, a few seconds on top of the surface of other water. Yeah. Um, you have lizards that are able to walk on water. That's true. So these Spring are easy, water. These are easy layers. Yeah. Yeah. And then he even did an experiment where he, in between two beakers, he put easy water in between them in between them and up to a certain point i think around like six centimeters or something created a bridge it Bro, holds that's insane it holds energy yeah. and it holds structure okay so that tells me a lot about jesus's time but yes <laughs> why is this useful <laughs> because we can create free energy from water okay this is this is exactly why the powers that be were scared of nikola tesla he did a lot of research into electricity and Victor Schauberger, who did a lot of research on water and how we can utilize that for universal free energy. I see. It's like, it's esoteric. It's, it goes really deep. So, um, those two oppo opposing charges next to each other serve as a battery made of water so you can extract charge from it. Now, what recharges that battery? Sunlight and infrared light. Hmm. Going back a couple episodes. Yeah. <laughs> Your kitchen plant gets energy from the sun through photosynthesis. The same thing happens in water. It's no surprise since that plant, plant is, since the plant is mostly made from water, um, the water absorbs the energy and converts it into some useful work. Ooh. It's the same concept applies. My, yeah. My favorite thing that I remember my mom used to do was take the whole pitcher out and put it in the sun, like on a Sunday. Yep. We just drink water out there and then we'd bring it back in and that water actually apparently it was just better for you that's, that's what was told to me but that's we just, thing. you really can't feel effects you know when that you're that young or you know still developing mm -hmm. i guess and your cells go through a similar process uh, akin to photosynthesis light is absorbed converting it into charge separation and then these charges are used by your body so as you can see here this is the i believe this is the mitochondria mm -hmm. and these cells are full of easy water yeah and if you don't know what the mitochondria <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> It's the power. <laughs> it's the powerhouse of the cell, baby. Oh my god, I love Let's that. Let's take a so moment much. to pause. There's a lot of talking. Do you guys like Zins? <laughs> we love kidding. Zins. We love Zins, especially with my spring water. <laughs> Do you have any last thoughts? Because we are nearing to the end of the episode. Any last thoughts? Um, As we can hear hawks. Just uh, the fact that I do not have a pool really pisses me off. That's the only thing about water that I hate, but that's it. <laughs>